Howdy, folks. James Benham, CEO of JB Knowledge. Usually, I'm here talking to you as the host of the Contact Crew podcast, but today is a special day. Uh, I've got a um, uh, we've got we've got a special topic to discuss today, and with us we have the CEO of Construct Connect and I Square Foot, Mr. Dave Conway. Dave, how's it going? Great, James. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing great. Yourself? I'm doing awesome. Yes. Never better. So you you joining us from uh, from Ohio today, yes. uh, and uh, I, I really appreciate you hopping on. Where it's pretty early in the day here, but uh, we thought we would get started with a big day with a big announcement, and that is that uh, JB Knowledge has sold SmartBid, uh, and uh, the Construct Connect family will be taking it on, and uh, that's pretty pretty exciting news uh, yeah. for uh, for us. Yes, look, it's very exciting for us as well. We're, um, look, I always have been impressed with the business that you built, James, and um, your attention and focus to the needs of the customer have been terrific. And uh, we believe the combination of high square foot and smart bid and smart insight will enable us to really to better serve our industry while making sure, and this is really important from, from our standpoint, making sure that smart bid customers will maintain the smart bid experience and the I square foot customers will maintain the I square foot experience. But one of the things we want to do, particularly in these market conditions is um, bring our subcontractor network together. Yep. Uh, so that smart bid users um, and I square foot users could, um, could really take full advantage of, searching and finding subcontractors who are capable of uh, performing the, the work that they're being asked to perform. Yeah, it's, a, it's actually pretty challenging for GCs these days with as hot as the market is to, to find enough qualified subcontractors. We're kind of, it kind of reminds me of 2006 and seven when the market was so superheated, it was really hard to find qualified labor that, uh, that could work on the projects. Yeah, look, you know, um, Non-residential construction has been growing two to three times GDP for the last six or seven years. And uh, the workforce has not yet uh, recovered from the recession. And we're aging out um, by 2020, more than 20% of all construction labor is going to be 55 years or older. And we're aging out faster than we're bringing in. Plus, 28.8% of the workforce is foreign born. So we've got pressure on immigration. Yep. The combination of those two things... Uh, matched against the growth in the market, uh, labor demand is as high as it's ever been, certainly in, in my 20 plus years of experience here. Yeah, and that's something that we noticed in SmartBid is our, our customers kept getting more and more demand for a broader and broader subcontractor reach. And uh, it, it, it made a lot of sense for us to pursue a partner that could help us get to that next level on, on data and get the product <laughs> Uh, connected to a much bigger network of contractors. And of course, the I Square Foot Networks, uh, you, you guys have been around for what um, about two decades now, if I'm correct. Yeah, I think our first, uh, we sold our first subscription in March of 2001. Okay. So just under two decades, you've been around and you've been uh, uh, building a, a great network of subcontractors. And that's the exciting thing is uh, for our GCs, you know, we have over, over a thousand uh, GCs that were joining this network and they now have access to, uh, you know, hundreds of thousands of qualified, verified uh, subcontractor records uh, that uh, can get in and actually look at the opportunities and bid. So it's a big deal for our, our smart bid customers. Um, you know, the, 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 we're, we're here trying to answer a few commonly asked questions for them too. The number one question that we've already um, anticipated as, hey, will, will I be forced to switch off of SmartBid? Of course, the answer is no. Um, SmartBid yeah, will be, right. be, be run for yeah, the There's no intention whatsoever. In fact, um, part of uh, the arrangement that we worked out, as you know, James, is to continue to have uh, your uh, team provide us with the support uh, as well as the new uh, application development. Yep. Not new application, but new features yep. um, in the SmartBid application. So we're excited about that. Uh, you built a great team, um, Trent, and the balance of the of the team that has been designing and developing, and uh, the the application itself will continue. Uh, we'll, we will continue to invest uh, significantly in building the application out over time, 
And uh, we're excited about the combination of both smart bid and I square foot. The other thing that we've done uh, in the last uh, year or so is we've also put together uh, both uh, on center and plan swift, and we've now added quotes off. And when you take the data from our network, um, that general contractors uh, provide. In addition to that, we're sourcing about 500,000 projects right now that we're, we're reporting on, um, 330,000 in the last 12 months that we've added to the network. So if you take the data in the network, you take the activity in the network, and then when you add uh, takeoff and estimating, what it creates is a pre-construction platform, um, which... Um, as you and I have discussed uh, over the last few, few months as we were working through this transaction, pre-construction is becoming more and more important. The, it, to me, the, the rising importance of pre-construction, given the demands of owners, uh, fewer owners are willing to accept projects over budget and late, and the, uh, just the nature of the market uh, contractors really have a challenge to select the right projects and they have limited estimating resources and they want to be certain that they're investing their estimating resources into projects, not only that they can win, but what they can, projects they can win profitably. And we've put together this uh, network that uh, enables that to happen. And so we're excited about the combination of I-square-foot and smart bid for that reason. And also the geographic coverage. Many of our customers, um, both SmartBid and iSquareFoot, move from market to market. And when your owner asks you to move to a market, being able to find a network of subcontractors in that market is critically important. And uh, that's what this uh, combination enables us to do as well. And the feedback that we've gotten, uh, early feedback that we've gotten from our customers uh, who we shared this transaction with last week has been really positive. Very supportive. Yeah, absolutely. The same thing on this side. Um, so important, uh, important to note that while you're, you're stitching together, um, arguably the first pre-con network that's really been pulled together from from start to finish, from the initial lead on the project where you know just the architects working on it, and you're you're getting initial indication that a project's being designed, uh, all the way through the. Um, the bidding cycle all the way through the award, and of course tying in uh, two, you know, two pretty pretty major takeoff systems and an estimating system allows you to really take the project from the initial idea and inception all the way through the beginning of the project where the shovel hits the ground. And of course, Dave, as you know, a lot of our uh, smart bid customers, a lot of your I square foot customers, end up using the platform through the buyout process, you know, through the, through active construction too. You know, pre-con doesn't stop when the shovel hits the ground. You keep bidding out work, and in particular, depending on the contract type. Uh, so it, it's interesting. It's also uh, neat to see um, with these level of integrations how much easier it's going to be in the next uh, coming years for customers to move their data between takeoff estimating, bidding, uh, and award. Uh, there's so many integration hook points, and you and I actually – uh, made a lot of similar decisions at similar times about uh, integrations with other platforms outside of our uh, of our invitation to bid and, and plan distribution and lead network platforms. And so uh, a lot of those partnerships, those partnerships will continue. So you'll continue to, be able to port your data around, which makes it makes it really easy for for customers. But that was definitely the chief request from from our smart bid clients is, hey, we want more subs, we want more data, we want greater access. At the same time, they didn't want to give up ownership rights to their data to get that access, right? And so that's important is that our data privacy policy will stay in place on SmartBid. Um, and, and, you know, if they choose to publish that project out uh, to get more uh, leads by pushing it into the to lead network for I-square-foot, that's, they can do that. Uh, but they don't have to. They can maintain that project privately if they choose. Yeah, absolutely. And that's critical, um, as you know. A general contractor's needs vary from project to project and sometimes even within a project on a particular trade as they're looking for coverage and the flexibility within the platforms is critical. Yep. And uh, we certainly um, believe that that is an important component of both uh, systems. And the, the interesting thing is 
um, when you when you kind of step back to thirty thousand feet, what what we what we see is that we're the second largest vertical in the economy, and we're the least data driven. It is a very fragmented market. It is project centric and market centric. Every project is different every time, and the the data that is necessary to do um, the analytics on a project as you're deciding to de- to determine if you're even going to estimate and bid the job is uh, an opportunity that this continuum enables us to deliver. And so if you start with the selection of the project and, and you finish with the estimate and the submission and the data that gets collected at the, at the company level, at the user level, enables you to use machine learning and some limited AI to literally predict which projects uh, you have a higher probability to win. And then inside the application, one of the things that we're investing in is to ensure that the, the subcontractors who are capable of executing your project are made available to you. Yeah. And that's, that's the exciting thing about the next 10 years, you know, as, as opposed to the previous 17 is that systems, uh, things like machine learning and AI have, have, have been developed enough uh, that they're actually usable in commercial applications where we can help you make better decisions on who to pick. You know, who do you usually win with? Who do you yeah. usually lose with? What are the, what are the, what are the key criteria? What's your probability of winning this bid right now? And that that's, those are numerical questions that can be answered numerically by things like ML and, and uh, specific forms of, of artificial intelligence that will help us. Um, certainly you'll see a lot of the tech that will enable that coming into both smart bid and I square foot, uh, more advanced optical character recognition technology, more advanced machine learning, uh, you know, better integration with the supply chain too. And that's something that we really haven't talked about to now that there's got to be a better integration with the people that are actually making all the products that go into the construction process as well. And that's something I know that you've been working on pretty hard for a long time. Yeah, look, from uh, from my vantage point, and maybe it's because, I don't know, maybe it's because I'm from Cincinnati. I just think about the benefit of having barcode data from the cash register at Walmart and how that impacts Procter & Gamble. And that kind of visibility to consumption is very difficult to obtain in our industry. Yep. Therefore, the cost associated with um, layers of distribution, layers of inventory, and um, the risk you have to take before you make significant decisions about how much inventory you actually build and maintain, or even consider new products or new manufacturing facilities. And I think over time, our industry will get to a point where the visibility of the data will enable, the visibility of, of consumption will enable the data to drive better decision making. And um, you know, the building product manufacturing segment is an important segment of our business. And knitting that um, constituency into the network in a way that's beneficial to the owner, to the manufacturer, but also to the general contractor and the trade contractor is really, really critical uh, from from our vantage point as we look out over the uh, over the horizon. It, the, the way we think about it is um, you kind of you got to have some scale to be able to make the investments necessary to get to that project centric market set of dynamics that drive um, better performance. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. You mentioned Cincinnati, you know, Procter and Gamble and Kroger, right? I mean, if they can figure out how to skew that many different products with that many different expressions and track that product all the way through the supply chain, there's no reason why we can't tackle that same problem in the construction business. I mean, you know, construction and food, Arguably, the two most important industries on the planet next in, in healthcare. If you if you add that third that third leg of healthcare, right? But con- yeah. and, which Cincinnati also has some phenomenal. In fact, random fact: my great grandfather went to medical school in Cincinnati at the Medical That's College. Right. Of- another, another random fact. <laughs> another random fact: I'm sitting in Lebanon, Ohio, and your your family actually founded Lebanon. Ohio. I know this is crazy, man. My great great grandfather was the founder of Lebanon, and my great grandfather went to the Medical College of Ohio. So I've got deep Cincinnati ties. <laughs> but it, it's fascinating to me. You look at like the three most important industries on earth, you know, like where people are housed, where people work, right? Uh, getting food to people and then taking care of their health care. 
the other two have been able to figure out this supply chain problem of figuring out who makes it and track it all the way through the process and then who's going to put it in and all the way through the process. And yet the AEC industry has kind of been left behind. And that's, that's the, to me, the, the big challenge on the planet, right? I mean, and if we can solve it here in North America, it can be solved elsewhere as well. Uh, but I, I think that this is the best shot of actually solving the supply chain problem because it starts, it starts in pre-con, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, pre-con and estimating, you know, the challenge, of course, is that uh, there's been mass consolidation in retail. And um, as a result, the data is easier to collect once there was a standardization uh, around barcodes. And so our challenge within our industry is, you know, Kroger has 2,500 stores, um, but in the U.S. this year, there'll be 350,000 construction projects on the non-residential side. And so, and they're all different and it's capturing data and where's the most efficient, effective way to capture it. Uh, how do you curate and validate and verify so that you can really drive great decisions? And that's the challenge. And that's why scale is, is important uh, because you've got to be able to invest in what's necessary to enable that to happen. The other piece of it is, and you, you and I both uh, have talked about this a lot. It's, um, it's integration across the continuum. It's actually capturing data from project management applications. It's capturing data from the design side. And, uh, you know, we now sit right in the pre-construction phase. So the data that is intended to be, or products that are intended to be in the project based upon specifications don't always end up in the project. And knowing what's supposed to go in versus what's actually in is what drives the real high quality consumable uh, information that drives supply chain and supply chain efficiencies. Um, it'll be a long, long, long time before our industry is ever perfect, but the data is becoming available in a way that we can actually improve uh, the effectiveness of the supply chain. Yeah, and that's that's really what a lot of this is about. And that's what uh, you've been working on for the last 17 years, and it's what certainly we've been working on since I um, started and co-founded SmartBit in uh, 2006. Now we've been competing with each other for quite a long time. And, and you know, that's uh, something a lot of people are going to say, but, but James, you guys have been competing. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, we made each other a lot better. Uh, I know. And that's something you and I have said to each other before is, uh, you know, iron sharpens iron. Uh, we both forced each other to, uh, to get a lot better. And, and certainly uh, that, that drive of improving will continue uh, after this, uh, after this transaction, in fact, there's very big plans uh, for uh, an even better uh, user experience in the future um, that 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 excite the heck out of me. And the really exciting thing is that JB Knowledge will actually continue. And you mentioned this already. Will continue to be involved in this platform as the as the developer for the continuation of the SmartBid platform. We'll actually keep developing the software. Um, you know, JB Knowledge uh, does our, our consulting and we did get some questions uh, from a couple of our clients about the consulting division. We'll continue to operate our consulting operations, our podcast, our road show, the, all those things will continue. JB Knowledge has uh, about 185 people after this transaction and we're going to keep moving forward with all the things we do uh, in the construction space. We'll also continue our insurance operations where we work for brokers and TPAs and carriers on the insurance side. So we're going to continue doing what we do, except now uh, we, we have a new client on our roster and that's construct connect slash I square foot that we're going to, con that we're going to continue to develop software for and, and uh, help out with whatever initiative um, that, uh, that comes along, including things like machine learning and AI and all those things will, will come around. We're already doing quite a bit of work on that in our research and development labs. And so that's the, this is kind of a non-traditional transaction in that, um, and that the, the two companies that are involved actually stay involved with each other after the fact. Yeah, look, we're excited about uh, not just maintaining, but growing our relationship. I was, um, and I've, I've mentioned this to, to members of my team, I was floored um, by the labs and the technology and the innovation and the work that you're doing uh, in, in Brian. And um I mean, some of the technology and, and the, the um, forward thinking uh, efforts that you're putting in place 
will clearly advance the industry. Uh, and we're excited to be connected to it. We think that um, we've got the kind of network and platform uh, as technology becomes available, we can continue to work together to assist uh, you and your team to bring things to market that are innovative, creative, problem-solving kinds of, of technologies, and we're excited about that. And um, I, I will also say that I, I agree with you that I think competition is, is critically important. I think it strengthened both of our, our businesses. Uh, and we did it in a, in a fair uh, but intensely competitive way. And um, I think that speaks to the quality of the people both uh, within your organization and within ours. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's been an, an interesting discussion. Uh, I would say if you have any, uh, if for, for those of you who are clients or prospects out there, if you have any questions, certainly if you're already talking to a, to a business development manager or a sales rep, uh, they've got a list of the frequently asked questions they can help you through. You can always check out smartbid.co or jbknowledge.com or isquarefoot.com, constructconnect.com. There's information on all of those websites. Uh, and you're, you're welcome. Uh, if you want to email me, it's james at jbknowledge.com. You can send me an email. You can ask questions about it. We're happy to field any questions that you guys have about uh, the product or its future or our continuity, uh, what we're doing. The, the good news is uh, that this, this transaction has already occurred. The lights are still on. Everything's good to go. We're actually continuing. We're, we're doing software releases, uh, you know, on a regular basis. And so uh, development and uh, improvement can continue moving forward. Uh, the exciting part is you're going to see some new things available to you in the future that you've been asking for uh, that are now cap now possible now that we're part of a, of a broader network. And uh, that's, that's really exciting for me. It's exciting for, uh, I believe, for our customers. And um, I think it's exciting for the for the I square foot uh, community of users as well that they have these these options available to them because we're going to bring a lot of integrations to bear as well. So uh, all all around uh, good news and it's been a good uh, response from the customer base so far. Uh, Dave, any closing comments? Um, we're just extremely um, both grateful and excited about the future of uh, Construct Connect and the I square foot and Smart Bid brands. Uh, we, we really are focused on the individual needs at the local market and the individual needs within a project and, uh, and how that scales out in a way that enables our customers to be more successful with us than without us. And, um, look, it's a, it's a, uh, it's been a great experience for me, uh, to get to know you better, James. Um, I, I respect what you're, what you've done and what you're doing. And um, we will continue to support the smart bid customers as well as the I square foot customers. And this is one of those situations where one plus one looks more like 11 than it does like two. Yep. And um, for us, uh, we'll continue to invest and keep our head down and do what's best for, for our customers and, and um, um, have a heck of a lot of fun along the way. I, I agree completely. It's also great that we already we already had integrations with OST and PlanSwift and SmartBit, and those connections are going to get deeper, as you can imagine. Uh, yeah. It's a, exciting news on that front. I mean, there's there's just a lot of really good synergy here that uh, that we're fired up about. And so I just want to thank you, obviously, as well. It's been great to get to know you and your team. Uh, it's it's always a, a neat transition to go from competing with someone to working with someone. And uh, you know, you and I are both real competitive people. We both love baseball. Another thing that we learned through this process is right. <laughs> is uh, is the love for baseball. So I see some I see some Reds games in the future. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I, I think I think that's going to have have to happen. But you got to go and see my Cubbies. So you got to understand. There's uh, there's there's Ooh. that side. I know. Ooh. I know. It's going to be hard. It's going to be not about you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta gotta love the Cubs. So look, uh, Dave, thanks for your time today. Thank you to everybody who uh, who's watched this. Uh, this will be included in the announcement that goes out today, but uh, you're welcome to reach out to us for any questions or concerns, and we'll talk with you soon. Have a great day. All right. Thanks, James. See you soon. All right. Take thanks. Care.